Yo, so peace and blessings, blessings and peace. It's the boy Jarmel Reese, and I want to share my experiences with you. If I had to put my life in one word, I would have to say ridiculous, man. From growing up in one of the worst neighborhoods in St. Louis, Missouri, launching a successful music career, recording with some of the top names in the industry, and launching my own clothing line, traveling the world, discovering the power behind yoga and meditation, and how it can heal the mind as well as the body. So tune in to my show, Just the Thought. Follow the story, like the page, subscribe. Let's write the rest of the story that you've always dreamed of. Peace and blessings, blessings and peace. It's the boy Jarmel Reese. See you soon. Peace and blessings, blessings and peace. It's your boy Jarmel Reese, man. And we are back with another show of Just the Thought. And I have co-hosts now, man. We are rebranding the show and have new co-hosts. And man, I'm so excited to be able to be back with you guys, bringing more information. And I, I, I'm, I don't know who to start with. So you guys can be able to start and introduce yourself. <laughs> Look at you. They, they're so nice. They want to introduce themselves. Like, you go, you go. All right. Uh, my Jessica, you go ahead and go. Go ahead and go. Hi, I'm my Jessica Foster. I am a personal coach, which means I assist with sexology, which I have the sex talk with adults and children. Um, I assist with people's marketing, e-commerce. So if you get anything to sell or to brand and you don't know how to do that, I can help with leads and all that. Also, the most thing that's touching to me, mental health. Yeah, so it is. With mental health. Come on, let's go. A little bit about me. Let's <laughs> Thank go. Let's you go. For and allowing me here today. No doubt, man. Thank you for being here with us today. No you know problem. what I mean? Like she's being very modest or whatever about what <laughs> Completely. She you know what I mean? She's trying to act all nervous today. But I got somebody else. I know she's not going to act nervous. And please introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, first of all, thanks for being here. Thanks for letting me join the conversation. This is going to be really fun. I'm excited. Um, so my name's Amory. I'm the owner of SustainableLife.Live. Um, I've been in the health and wellness space for almost four decades. I joke and say I started when I was 10. <laughs> it helps my age work out a little better. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm a certified personal trainer, certified, um, yoga teacher. I'm certified in digital wellness, which is a really new and upcoming field, which I'm super excited about. Um, and I can't wait to share more information on that. Um, and I am a certified wellness coach. Yeah. So a different space, but we talk a lot about, um, social, emotional and mental well-being as well as physical and nutritional well-being and just helping people find their pathway. Yeah. I think one thing we talk a lot about is um, so much information out there. And what we hope to do, I think, is point people towards a direction that feels right and organic to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, and that's why it's just the thought, you know what I mean? We just- Just the thought. Yeah. We <laughs> just want to be able to kind of like point people to those directions and like what those resources may be. Absolutely. Like. And so- um all of us have came together in a space of being able to try to be able to help people with mental health, um, people who have just, you know, been physically abused or being treated in a different way or just trying to be able to change a different thought or sure. mentality, you know. Um, so some of the things that we could do, I mean, you know, what do you think is some of the things that um, we could be able to contribute to the world and be able to give people um, insight? On? Um, I think a lot overall. Like, I know for sure with these changes like earlier we talked about how COVID was right yeah so just think about everything that happened with our children from their depressive state they went from being outside in a world with people and peers to like computer like, yeah that right. is it yeah now when i'm back out and it's still like they're stuck yeah in that still space of like electronics right. so trying to get people to see back to that one-on-one -on -one or like that person yeah in sure action. human connectivity yeah yeah try to get that back out how it was before that would then start to help adjust like their mental health yeah. from a depressed state to back more hopefully happier yeah 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 what you think Ann? yeah i think it's hard i think that one of the things um just in the space in general and the wellness space is this um idea that 
we're going to reach a pinnacle or we're going to reach a level and then we're there and then we're going to stay transfixed. Yeah. But I think one of the things we don't realize is that within any given day, within every in any hour, right, we can have a multitude of emotions. Yeah. And I think that some of it is just being um, aware that, you know, we were born with emotions for a reason, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and we should be able to feel them, express them, mm -hmm. and then acknowledge that they don't define who we are. That's it. Right? Like, just because I'm angry doesn't mean I'm an angry person. Yeah. It means I'm feeling angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that there's some confusion there mm -hmm. with um, some of it. So... I think that's important to kind of um, migrate our way through and kind of understand. And yeah, I think yeah. that that's it. Yeah. I what think, about you? No, seriously, it's, it's more so like it just piggybacking off of what you said with um, it's just building a self image. Sure. I think more so we, we lack a self image about ourselves. So um, soon as somebody tells us something that we we we, um, don't even connect with we're we're able to we're trying to connect with it and again i don't think our backgrounds um or our baggage whatever you want our baggage <laughs> our baggage <laughs> this is what it is i don't think that they necessarily matter and i think we're, we're all really clear about that yeah. is that our story doesn't mean it's your story no. um and we're not telling you that because we navigated this way this is the way you have to do it but i do think there's some value in maybe sharing a little bit of of who we are and where we came from. Yeah, for sure. So for me, you know, um, I come from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, go Cardinals. Yes, go Cardinals all the time. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're Cubs fans. Oh, no, 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 no. No, Cubs fans don't exist. That's not real. Not, <laughs> no offense. I'm just being serious. But seriously, you know, you're definitely going to always see me with a St. Louis hat on. If I, Love you know, it. I'm not wearing these hats. But um, also, just coming from a um, just a, a very crazy environment. Yeah. Um, I've seen, um, just a lot of things that maybe had a kid that I shouldn't have been able to see. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just molded me to be able to, um, to push further. Sure. You know, um, I couldn't see outside of where I was being raised at and I never, I always knew that it was more. Right. But I didn't know what that looked like. And in my community, they tell you, don't even take the steps forward to even see what that looks like. Mm. And so for me, I was starting to take these steps to go see what it looked like. And the people that in my community were like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get back here. Get back here. And it was, it was more so like, okay, the more I went forward, the more people tried to pull me back. And the more I wanted to go back into those environments because being back in those environments were safe. Sure. And even so, if they weren't. Even <laughs> if they were safe because they weren't safe. Right. You know, there's, nothing, there's nothing safe about. You know, um, I remember being a kid and um, seeing somebody come down to the park that I live right across the street from and robbing everybody sure. in the park. And we act like it's normal that it doesn't affect us. And I, I had to learn on later on in life that that, tra that tra trauma mm -hmm. and traumatic experiences, um, it really affected me. Sure. It affected my anger. It affected the way that I, um, I talked to people. It affected the way that I even communicated with women. On a certain level, because I was listening to the music, I was into rap music right. and stuff like that. And I, I do music, and so um, you know, that's just really the overall of it. You know, yeah. you, you don't know anything until you go to or something. And so for me, it's more so like I want to be able to to push this to a place where we could be able to help um, people understand that you can push forward. Sure. You don't have to be what your environment tells you that you have to be. I agree. You can create a new life for yourself and it doesn't make you fake and it doesn't make you not real. Right. And, and I think that's the part about it. We always want to be able to fit in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's some parts of me that always, I, I look at my life and I'd be like, okay, I'm doing this and I'm, I'm becoming an entrepreneur. I'm meeting people who are doing the same thing right. that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm becoming way different from the people in my neighborhood that I grew up with. And it's not that I don't love them. And it's not sure. that I'm not. It's just that we're not having anything to conversate sure. about anymore because I'm trying to do this and they're doing other things. And there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Right. It's just that I just wanted something different from my life. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a little bit about my story and, you know, why we're even here to just to have just a thought about things, you know. So, Absolutely. Um, so, what about you, Jesse? Yeah. So mine's 
<laughs> a little different. <laughs> um, so, like, my background, my mom's from Chicago, from the south side of Chicago. My dad's from Waukegan. So, I, from Waukegan, because that's most of my childhood right. I can remember. Yeah. Um, I come from a family of four siblings. I'm the third, three sisters, um, three girls, and one boy. And it's kind of the same way, right? being the one to try to do things different from what you've seen. Yeah. I realize we all have that in common. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what I'm doing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Definitely different. Um, same kind of thing. Didn't really travel much with my mom. My grandma tried to show us different things, but it wasn't until I got into, like, my high school years, right? Um, and joined ROTC. That's wow. what got me yeah. to do more like exploring and travel and trying to like find yourself. Sure. Cause I got two sisters who are older than me. Right. And I got a younger brother. So I'm in the middle. Right. I don't have like the close knit siblings. I'm kind of finding my own way. Sure. And at the same time you go through your high school year or your education years period. And you're being told that you're a slower learner or you yeah. can't do this or you can't do that. So now that's wrapping your brain of what you Completely. can't do, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. So then how do you overcome it? Yeah. Mm. It's hard. You set those goals and you, you, you push through. So I think for me to get to this point of learning entrepreneurship, um, it really took a lot because you had to be your own cheerleader a lot sure. of the time. Yeah. yeah. Because what they're telling your parent, you can't do. She right. won't be this. She won't be that. For you internalizing, well, for me, it's like, now I want to because you're telling me I can't right. do it. Yeah. I'm going to do everything you say I can't do. And it still feels like that even now. Sure. Because things changed over, you know, the years. Yeah. And I didn't go back to what the norm would have been. So it's like, oh, my God. Well, you should get a job. Well, you should do this. or you should do that. And it's like, mm. No, that ain't working for me. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. see a bigger picture here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then you have life, you know, you get married, you have kids. Now you have that situation going on. So it can it comes with a lot, but yeah, I think that's the dope thing that does get us all here being a difference out of our family, which is yeah. like crazy because none of us know each other exactly. in the same yeah. age group or yeah. even the same place. I know. <laughs> it's no, crazy, yeah. right? So yeah. it's very it's very cool to to talk about our experiences and not feel like we're being judged yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah so what about you Ann? yeah so i didn't realize we both grew up with some learning um challenges too which is super interesting um yeah i mean i would say um I probably had, you know, what people would consider a very, you know, normal, you know, average, you know, Norman Rockwell childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm super grateful for the experiences that I did have. I did get to travel um, and see some incredible places. It's how I realized I was way more comfortable being outdoors, um, either in the middle of nowhere or in a big bustling city, you yeah. know, um, it, which both places you can be alone, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Um, so I'm super grateful for that. Um, I always felt like a square peg, yeah. um, trying to fit in. I didn't really look like my siblings. Um, Definitely struggled with some, you know, and again, the, the words have changed so much, um, was diagnosed, um, with dyslexia. So I had a severe learning disability. I mean, learning was a struggle, mm. um, for me. And, you know, it was different for women when I was yeah. growing up, yeah. um, for sure. We did. Tell us about what, what, what about what you mean? Yeah. So it was, you know, I'm 60. And so when I was growing up, you didn't see a lot of women that were going into, math or sciences or yeah. becoming doctors or becoming lawyers. So they were yeah. teachers and nurses and housekeepers. And housekeepers yeah. And, you know, and housewives. Yeah. And, yeah. Housewives yeah. was like a job. That was a job. Was a, was a yeah. Thing. And yeah. it is a job. I mean, so I don't want to like no, take that. Definitely. Yes. But none of that kind of f felt like that was going to be me. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, I, and I knew kind of early on that I probably didn't tick the way, um, other people 
ticked. Um, I was able to go to college. So I was the first woman in our family to go to college since um, there have been women that have graduated. My sisters both graduated from college. Um, I've had several cousins that have graduated. My children have graduated from yeah. college. But you know, I think that people now, uh, particularly where I grew up, you think everyone goes to college. Well, that was not the case when I was growing up. Um, so I was super lucky to have a really good group of girlfriends that I'm still really well connected to. Um, but, it, you know, it was different. I looked different than yeah. other people I grew up around. Uh, my lifestyle's a little different. Um, I work full time. Um, you know, I, I do have children and I... Um, raise children, obviously, with help. Um, you can't work full time and raise children Absolutely. without some help. Absolutely. Um, you know, but I had a pretty incredible village. I, yeah. I felt super lucky. I raised my kids in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, that was an amazing experience that I am forever grateful for. I had an incredible community there, yeah. um, which again, I'm super blessed. Um, it was a lot of, um, you know, job sharing as yeah. far as getting kids to and from places. Um, and so I'm forever grateful for that and for the resources those friends and that community gave me. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I think that for me, what I wanted in particular for the the clients that I work with and for my kids is I wanted them to be able to feel safe trying things on, yeah. whether it's a personality or yeah. trying a job on or trying an experience on yeah. and not being judged yeah, right. and not being, you know, because you didn't look the same or you don't look the same or and being celebrated. I think we spend so much time celebrating people for success. Yeah. Like, Instead of celebrating people for just trying, yeah, and man. failing, yeah, and failing, <laughs> that, that part, yes, I yes, know. People have to fail completely, yes, and, and, and it's not a negative thing. Hundred percent. I think the the I think it's, it goes back to um, just a little bit. We're all in the same room where we're talking about you know what we were told about us ourselves at school. Sure. And so school can create a self image for you sure. that can be either positive or negative. If, a, if someone tells you that you have dyslexia, right. you have a slower learning curve. Yeah. You have a slower learning I've been told that I, I was told the same thing I at know. school. And it was like, what? How am I? It's, it's nothing. I never felt anything was wrong with me. I okay, definitely right. felt there was something wrong with me. But, but that's the thing. <laughs> Until they tell you. Until they tell you. When they point you out and be like, okay. Something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you didn't know until they told you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing about it. It's like, yo, you, you get to that place where it's like somebody tells you mm -hmm. something's wrong and then you're like, but I think that's what led us all here because we may have took the initial, but it was like, no, yeah, I don't, I don't receive what it is that you're trying to give to me. I think I'm this person. I'm this person. And it's pushed us here to be right, right. here to be able to try to be able to help others to be able to True. understand that same thing. Well, you right? know what we we're all able to do? And then we'll save this because I know we're, we're going to sign off here. We'll save this for the next part. What yeah. we were all able to do, which no one has said, we were all able to set boundaries and accept boundaries from yeah. others. Yeah. That's the difference. That's it. That's yeah. it. So let's save that for the second let's episode. Get let's get it. So, <laughs> man, just, this is just, this is great. This is the intro for us to be able to introduce ourselves so we could be able to, I, I just wanted to bring these beautiful women into the fold and it just their conversation of what we're going to be doing and how we're going to just explode and um, come into your living room. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, thank you again. Um, we'll be back next week with another show of Just a Thought. So peace and blessings, blessings and peace. It's the boy, Jormel Reese. We'll be back next week. Peace. Don't stray too far.